Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the stage, almost last, <laughs> Mr. Hanky, the Christmas poop. <laughs> all right, coming up next, he's been sitting here nicely all night long, so I'm going to let him come up here and go home and enjoy the rest of his night. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chip Thompson. Chip Thompson, everybody. Hey everybody, I'm Chip and I'm an alcoholic. Hi Chip. There we go, thank you. You guys have heard this shit before. I saw this thing today, uh, I saw this chick in a plaid dress. No, let me rephrase that. I saw an old woman in a plaid dress, plaid skirt. And, you know, that whole Catholic schoolgirl thing is kind of, kind of messed it up for me. Same time I see a plaid skirt, all of a sudden I'm fucking sporting wood, man. <laughs> Ain't right. Yeah. Yeah, shit. Yeah, that wasn't right at all. That gal was geriatric. <laughs> you know, I, I saw this thing, uh, somebody was talking about, uh, you know, how, you know, about how dangerous nukes were and all that. And I was thinking about that because I'm kind of really against reproduction and making more fucking people. And I think if you make, it, make a shitty kid, a shitty kid could be worse than a nuke, you know? I mean, you know, Hitler was a shitty kid at some point in time, and he did more damage than any nuke, Yeah. Don't make any more fucking people is the point, you know? There are just too many fucked up people on this planet, you know? I mean, my parents, uh, I'm here because the condom broke. You know? And I was a shitty kid, you know? I mean, I did all those drugs that uh, Herman was going, anybody ever done meth? I did way too much meth. That's how you end up looking like this, man. <laughs> you know, what's that feel like? Ah, I don't know, because the acid skewed my whole fucking thing, man. But, you know, I, I did read this thing once and said that uh, people that take uh, hallucinogenic drugs are actually better human beings than normal human beings. The only problem is I've never met a normal human being to make a point, you know, comparison. You know, because everybody's fucked up. You know, I mean, they, they, they just like this thing that we're talking about, people that have normal sex. You know that nobody has normal sex? All of us are kind of kinky. Even the normalest guy you know He's got, you know, maybe some whips and chains in the closet or something like that. His old lady likes him to dress up like in a fucking skirt so she can spank him or some weird shit, you know? We all have these weird kinks. The cautionary tale from your sick, dirty Uncle Chip is this. When you start banging somebody who is... Well... Interesting. Eventually, you're never going to be able to get your kitty back in the box, you know, once you've gotten to that level of a chick who's like into, you know, bondage, foreplay, slap, you know, all the whole, the whole stuff being electrocuted. And then you go and you try to bang somebody who's normal, like, come on, get up, man, she's hot. And your dick's like, yeah, sorry, man, I'm bored. Kind of like Ryan, Ryan there. <laughs> I'm bored with that shit. That's just too fucking mainstream, you know? A missionary position? Really? We're not going to start this off with some double penetration porn? What the fuck, man? That ain't right. Yeah, it's a cautionary tale, man. Keep it low, man. Keep it straight and narrow and as normal as you can because normal sex is going to get fucking boring if you don't. Uh, I had something written down here that, uh, no, that was something of her shit. Uh, you know, it's like this thing, right? You sit there and I've heard this stuff. You're watching, uh, you know, any video off of YouTube or something weird. You'll see some chick going, I look good. Like, uh, no, you don't. You know, you don't look good. But the problem is, it's for her, she looked good. How many times did we step out in the morning, we looked in the mirror and said, oh, fuck, I look good. No, you don't. You don't look good. I don't look good, none of us look good. The, but you know, it, compared to the really, really good looking people who sit there and go, man, I look like shit today. Don't you wanna just kill those fucking people? You know, it's like, come on, really? Fuck you, you know? I wake up every day and this is as good as it fucking gets, but 
You're, you look bad? Fuck you. Somebody should kill you. Hit you with a fucking car. What? Yeah. Look how good this guy looks, man. Jeez. <laughs> and he's like, man, yeah, I got this thing going on, man. And looking a little rough. Had a couple. Fuck you. That I can't grow that. I can't grow that fucking stubble, man. It comes in all meth lab patchage. I look like one of, uh, you know, Rosenberg's fucking customers, you know? <laughs> you know, so anyways, I do have a set, and he did tell me to take all the time I needed, so I'm going to get to that thing. So I was out front having a smoke with it before I come in here, I was talking to this chick, and she says, uh, yeah, I only smoke when I drink. I said, yeah, I only smoke when I'm trying to get laid. Kind of a chain smoker, you know? And if we had any female waitresses, this joke works well. Tip your waitresses and your wait staff like you're trying to get laid. You know, like you're trying to get into their pants. They deserve it, they work hard. It would be awesome if we had these, uh, you know, I had this idea that it would be awesome if you walked into a room, as soon as you walked through the door, your theme song played. You know, whatever your theme song is, whatever your music that, that would indicate what kind of human being you are, right? You see a guy walks through the door, he's got Nickelback kicks off, I want to be a rock star. I'm like, yeah, that guy's a fucking douchebag. Some chick comes through and walks in the door, gets Carrie Underwood kicks off, and you're like, yeah, I ain't asking her to dance, man. I can't afford to buy another pretty little four-wheel drive. Yeah. <sighs> I'm a truck driver, and the one thing that gets on my nerves more than anything else is bumper stickers. I hate cars that are covered with fucking bumper stickers on the back of them. Nothing pisses me off more. The first bumper sticker told me you were a monumental asshole. You didn't have to repeat yourself 15 fucking times all over your back window. You're a fucking douchebag. I fucking hate you. So how I'm going to get my revenge is I'm going down to Kinko's and I'm going to have them print me up a hundred NAMBLA bumper stickers. If you don't know what NAMBLA is, it's the North American Man Boy Love Association. I'm going to go to art fairs and gun shows. I'm going to find the car with the most bumper stickers. I'm going to stick that bumper sticker in the middle. And then they let them figure out. I wonder how long that's been on the back of my car. Who would do such an evil thing? I'm such a wonderful human being with all my fucking bumper stickers. No, you're a fucking douchebag. I hate you. So I'm driving down the road, I see a sign that says, Dick's Wings. I'm like, man, my dick doesn't have wings. I wonder if everybody else's dicks have wings, man. If everybody else's dicks have wings, and my dick's don't, dick doesn't have wings, what the fuck? You know, how do I get wings for my dick? I got it. I get my dick a red bull. So I'm driving down the road, I see another sign that says, Carpets and Drapes, and I'm like, wow, that's the weirdest fucking analogy ever, man. Carpets and Drapes, I've been in a lot of houses in 47 years, and I've never been in one that had carpets that matched the drapes. And that's okay, it doesn't matter, I like bare floors anyway. Yeah, I'm 47, and I uh, just recently realized, and this is how slow I am on the uptake, that fish tacos is it just a metaphor for eating pussy? I didn't know that, man. You would actually think all the fish taco. You know. Yeah, so I found out that uh, recently that uh, pole dancing is going to become an Olympic sport. And I'm proud. I think that's fucking awesome. That's awesome. Now I can put the pole dancer silhouette in the back window, write destiny over the top of it. So I can be proud of my daughter's athletic achievements. You want to see what my daughter's working on as far as routine? Blue Angels, the end of 103rd Avenue. She works Tuesdays, slip a dollar bill in her G-string until her daddy says hi. I know you guys think that's pretty fucking creepy. It's not that creepy. She's my stepdaughter. <laughs> yeah, so we lost Joan Rivers recently. It's a big hit for the comedy community. Yeah, we all miss her. But I don't think we had to lose Joan. You know, uh, we should dig her up and give her to Jeff uh, Dunham, you know? I mean, shit, she's already mostly plastic anyway. You know? 
I don't know how Joan would feel wherever she is residing in the hereafter about having Jeff Dunham's hand lodged up her ass, but you know it's got to be, <laughs> no matter what, the Joan doll is going to be a hell of a lot funnier than Peanut. Boobs cause ADD. You know? Um, I didn't have ADD until I was in sixth grade, man. And so all of a sudden, what happens in sixth grade? The girls start growing boobs. And all of a sudden, I got ADD. They're feeding me Ritalin. And, you know, recently I was down in St. Augustine. I'm hanging out down there. I've got this girl that I'm seeing. We're walking along, and uh, all of a sudden I see this perfect rat come by, and I'm just lasered in. She elbows me and says, What, you gonna do her? I'm like, you think I got a shot? You know what, baby? You know what? If we hook, if you help me out, you wingman this shit, we might be able to pull this off. You know? I get the two for one, take care of a bucket list item. That's awesome. You know, right on. You know, so. Yeah. So, anyways, I was uh, out there. I was in the moment. You know, been been out with my girl. We're having a great night. It's awesome. We're in bed. We're making love. She had a little bit too much wine. She jumps up and goes to the bathroom. Sir, if your girl's bending over the toilet, you should hold her. I ah, see, that's where I fucked up. I held the hips. But you can't blame me, you know. The last time I held the chick's hair, well, you know, it came off of my hand, man. She was bald. You know what? The cool part about it was the carpets did match the drapes. My mother told me this thing once. We're sitting around drinking, and she says, uh, yeah, you know, your father had the most magnificent penis of any man that I've been with in my life. He either thought all those whores he was fucking, he even figured out how to use it. <laughs> like, shit, Mom. This ain't the kind of conversation we should be having at a funeral. And I'll finish with this. So, uh, you know, at some point in time, we're not barbarians. We're good, decent gentlemen. You know, you're with a gal. It's time, time comes where it's time to negotiate anal sex. Yeah, you gotta talk about that shit. Don't, don't sneak up on them with it, yeah? So, uh, night comes, I'm smelling good, scrub behind my nuts, rose petals on the bed. It's all good. And she shows up, I meet her at the door, kiss on the cheek. And yeah, she says, uh, I said, are you, you know, you ready? She goes, yeah, are you? I said, oh, fuck yeah. That's when she pulled the strap on out of her purse. You know, the one thing I figured out as I was crying into my pillow is that I'm definitely not gay because if I was gay, that would have been a hell of a lot more fun. Thank you very much. I'm Chip Thompson. That's my time. Welcome yeah. to Herman Oh, There's other ways. Chip Thompson, everybody. He thinks he knows he's not gay yet. Ha! He doesn't know it.